Time to learn how to learn. <laughs> okay. Hello everyone and welcome to an extra special limited edition coaching series here on Pink Bike. We've made 10 top shelf grade A juicy videos for you to wrap your minds around. I've split mountain biking up into what I believe to be the core skills that when learned can be applied to everything you will come across when riding a bike. Each video in the series is going to link into the next and refer to each other to build up the full picture. So if you think something is missing, don't worry, it'll probably be coming up in a future vid. By the time this is done, you should be able to give all your mates unwanted riding feedback like a hypercritical douchebag. Yo, <laughs> oh, shrout that time, you see that? It's sick, nailed it. Um, no, didn't rail it. You actually break like right, right in the middle of the corner. Worst place you could have break. Killed your exit speed. Just all right. No. I mean, you might as well not even corner if you're going to do it like that. So today, to prime you all for the series to come, I wanted to tackle something that I think is way more important than watching your 15th how to manual video. That is how to actually learn a new skill. Humans are amazingly complicated, intelligent, and inquisitive beings, which means, among other things, we will actively seek to learn new skills that are not crucial to our survival. I've just been watching my baby son learn to open the washing machine and put things inside it and then clap to himself in delight at his accomplishment which is just, it's adorable. This joyous feeling of the dopamine hit your brain receives is addictive. And when you are young, these moments of learning come so thick and fast. But as you get older, time becomes more valuable. Your energy levels feel more finite. And unless new skill is relevant for work, it can feel hard to justify the effort. Procrastination is the enemy of learning and there's no surefire way to combat it other than to seize the moments when your motivation peaks. This is different for everyone and can be influenced by stress, moods, music, weather, friends, and all manner of different things. All I know is when you feel a spark of motivation, you better grab onto it. Time to learn how to learn. Before you even get started, you have to make a positive mental decision to actually learn the new skill. This is goal setting and it's the key to any successful endeavor. A goal is not a guarantee of success, but it gives you a target to aim for. Without a target, you're just blindly shooting at nothing, which I mean, can be really good fun, just not very productive. Today, I'm going to set myself a goal of learning a new skill, which is something I haven't done in ages. For this reason, I felt that for the opening episode, we should kick things off in style and bring in an expert on learning new things. This is Mike Boyd. What's up, Ben? What's happening? <laughs> this, time, uh, this time I'm teaching you then. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I taught you last time, so now repay the favor. Over the last six years, Mike has dedicated his time to learning new skills and documenting them on his YouTube channel. He's agreed to help out today with my rusty learning skills and he's also quite handy on a bike himself. So I reckon he should try and learn the chosen skill too. As we're on a one day shoot, I decided to pick something that I thought wouldn't be too challenging, but still pretty cool. It's called a crank flip. And we need an example. Max, can you, you can do crank flips, eh? All right. All right, All right do one. Wait. My goal is just to land one cleanly to the pedals on flat ground, but if things go well, maybe try on a jump too. What do you reckon? I reckon that's ambitious, but that'd be badass if you stomped that today. With our goal set now, you've got to plan things out. This can be anything from, I'll go on a ride today and I'll just spend half an hour trying the new skill, all the way to, I'll assign one hour every Saturday for the next three calendar months and I'll document my progress in my skill journal. I'm thinking somewhere in the middle would be ideal, but we only have a few hours today, so that's gonna be our time scale to try and reach our goal. You can tackle the learning process by yourself, which some people will definitely prefer, or maybe you don't have a choice because your friends are all Strava weapons that only ride for the distance, bro. That's not a problem if you're working on a chill skill, but if it's something riskier, I'd highly advise convincing those friends to tag along or even join you in the learning process. Not only will it be safer, but collaborative learning is easier, more fun, and has way more toe hitches. On the topic of safety, I dress accordingly. 
If you're trying something high speed, high energy, or just downright reckless, go all out. Full face helmet, neck brace, armor, knee pads, just the full works. Lots of people are laughing at me for these shin guards, but we'll see who's laughing at the end of the day. <laughs> just listen to that. Oh. No bother. Learning the crank flip on the flat is going to be reasonably low risk with our protection. When a skill is low risk, you can dive straight in and just try the whole thing. Who knows, you might just get it straight off the bat. <laughs> I, I, I think we have to say we're just about to start filming and Mike might have already landed one. <laughs> and there you go, how to learn. Kinda, I kind of landed butt first, I think. Oh. Can you imagine how bad that would have been without shin guns? <laughs> Death! Here we go, here we go! <laughs> if you don't, you should try and break the skill down. I'm struggling, I'm going to try the little parts first. You can focus on practicing each individual component to familiarise yourself with them before attempting to stitch them all together. Yes! Yo! <laughs> There are a few important things to remember during this process. Number one is to make definitive changes if something isn't working. Interesting. I've spotted something. I just keep going like this, pedals level, jump, and then kicking and slipping my foot off the back. It's easy to fall into the habit of doing just the same thing over and over again, thinking it'll somehow just happen. You need to really mix things up to learn how big changes will affect the outcome. But when Mike jumps, his pedals are like this. But I gotta like, do like a fifth of a rotation back and then kick. It's weird. There we go, was that it? Oh yes! Yeah! <laughs> that was clean. He's got it before me. The butt, the butt never touched the seat there. Damn it, right, okay, okay. Oh, oh kinda. Oh yeah! yeah. Oh, Not as clean as Max. No. Like, I feel like I'm landing like here. Max is just like. Yeah. <laughs> gonna not look at the pedals. Oh. oh. oh nice. That's a tip. We're both landing quite soft. We're both kind of like like that. Almost the seats there as a backup, in case you miss. Yeah. Um, but what you want to do is just be like, no. I can do this and you just land like ah, confident. I've just I've just thought about it and I've got it. I would jump too high. I'm I'm pleased with that one. Your body and brain will lie to you. So many times I've been teaching people and I'll tell them to do something, they'll go, have a go, and then they come back to me and they're like, that was so much better. Nailed it, nailed it. And I'm like, that was exactly the same. Exactly the same. <laughs> Learning what to feel for and how to feel it takes practice. So I recommend you cheat. Get a friend to watch or better yet, film what you are doing in slow motion. If you're out on your own, just balance your phone on a tripod or even a tree branch. There is no alternative to cold hard video evidence to slap you back into reality. Oh, no. ah! <laughs> We're both sort of getting it. Not consistently yet though. No. So we've managed to kind of figure out the different steps and now we're getting, getting adventurous. We're getting adventurous, Max. We want to start trying to add in either a hop or a jump. I'm gonna try a hot one. Do you want that? I might shim myself. Uh, who's laughing nice. at my shinies now, eh? Oh, that was sweet. I kind of sat down a little. <laughs> oh, that was clean. Legs didn't soften at all. You're just like it's a two moving thing, isn't it? Hop. It's like a three three motion. You just need to get the hop, and then once you're in there, just do exactly what you were yeah, doing yeah. before. So I don't think I've got it quick enough. Interesting. But we need to get the skill totally locked in because we're going to add a whole new skill to what we're already doing. You can't do that if you're having to consciously think about two different things. So we need to get them both 
not quite in muscle memory, but close enough. It looks like you, you've, I know you're saying you're, you're, the flips look slow, but they're actually faster than Max's. Oh. Uh, that's weird. That, the, the, night, the, the reason I thought Max's crank flips were so nice is because they were slow. Ah. Like it was, wasn't in a hurry, oh, right. you know? Yeah. Uh, so you've got that down and like this is where I think I'll leave you to it because I can't really hop and I can't really jump. Um, <laughs> I, I thought I was doing it too slow. Like, I was sure I was doing it slower, but my body lied to me. It lied. So I got my, my buddy <laughs> saying, actually, you got this. I'm trying to make it consistent so that that movement of just get him spinning, feet back on, feet back on is like locked. Visualizations can really help, especially if you're working on a higher risk skill. Focus on each individual body part and imagine what they will do and what it will feel like as they perform their task. I've got it, I've got it. Pull from prior experiences and similar skills to try and form the best image in your head of what you are about to do. I know for racing, I'll imagine my race runs and it really helps with learning the track. You do look like a bit of a daft idiot when you're doing it though. Oh. Oh. You gotta own it. I don't got it, I don't got it. <laughs> Yo! Oh, that was so close! If possible, slow things down. This doesn't really apply to the trick we're working on today, but for trail skills where normally you're moving fast, you need to slow things down. You cannot apply conscious change while going at your default speed. The conscious analytical part of your brain is just too slow to react fast enough. By the time you thought, right now I need to pump through my legs here, you're already out the other side, off the feature, offline, going too fast and heading straight for a tree. Slow it down if you can. Work through the learning process until you make those connections in your brain to move a conscious action into an unconscious action. That's called muscle memory and it's blazing fast. Once the skill is locked in there, you can then turn on the afterburners. Catch it in the air, flee. Watch out for fatigue of the body and brain. Obviously, as the body gets tired, performing physical skills become harder but it's the mental fatigue that will halt the learning process. It looks like um, he's suffering from fatigue. <laughs> <laughs> do you find that when you really want to get something that you just do it over and over again and just... Yeah, I've got better at, at stopping that. Yeah. Like setting timers, sticking to it. Um, and I used to do like 40 minutes and I've now even reduced it to like 15 minute sessions, which is, sounds so daft, it sounds like you're not doing anything at all. Yeah. But if you can completely avoid that, phase where you're like going backwards you, you don't get so um upset with yourself yeah yeah you know if it's just constant progress yeah and the, the way to do that is by taking regular breaks you want to leave the skill being hungry to learn more for the next time yeah but it's really hard to do because you just want to get it done you want to learn it now yeah but, yeah and you think that more time equals equals better skill level but but today we've only got one day so that's all just pointless. Yeah. <laughs> so learn to spot the signs of hitting that mental wall and take a break. Eat some food, drink some water, or just call it for the day. Because at night, that's sometimes where the magic happens. During sleep, your body cleans up a lot of the new messy connections made in the brain when learning. And I've had more than a few occasions where I've tried again the next day and nailed that impossible thing first time. Finally, you will suck. You will suck hard. You will. <laughs> and that's absolutely fine. This is one of the hardest things to get over for some people. It can cause you to get embarrassed, frustrated, and even give up. But failure is the route to success. You're looking oh, like a daftie. Like, yeah. your people are staring at you. Um, you're looking stupid. But the, because I've done this so many times, you realize people just don't care. People don't yeah. care what you're doing. 
Like, if there was other bikers here, they would just be so absorbed in, in the jumps that they wouldn't even notice us doing this. So, I think that embarrassment of doing something new yeah. and looking like an idiot. Everyone fails and learns. Fails again, learns again, until eventually you can do it. That rider that just nailed the skill that you're trying to learn and is now watching you fail is not judging you. They are pumped seeing you putting the effort in to learn just like they did. I think the mountain biking community in particular is really supportive of this process. So don't be shy to get out there and just suck because you will get better. To wrap this up, while the key points to remember are smoothly displayed somewhere on screen, I really want to encourage something for all mountain bikers to embrace. You need to play. Mess around in the car park, try silly things, pop manuals down the roads, stop on trail and session that turn. Challenge your mates to a daft challenge. It's through play that you learn the most effectively. Going through all the, the steps that you talk about in your videos has worked, but like, is there anything you specifically do that's maybe different? I think there's, if, if there's anything I do more than anyone I know, it's, it's I really celebrate my success. Like I'll scream and shout on camera, I'll really enjoy the moment, <laughs> and I'll even go home and crack open, and open a bottle of white with him when we get home. Like it's, yeah, I, I really relish what I've done and I don't yeah. I don't play it down a, a big up even though it's just a crack clip I'm like <gasps> yeah I don't think I don't think there's any need to like hold it all in like just you know enjoy it Flipping fair play, Mike, when I asked you to come and I was like, I'll get him to try it. I was like, there's no way, there's no way you're going to get it. And you were like, there's no way. And then you did it. So yeah, cheers for coming along, man. So, Appreciate uh, it. Um, Sports Direct specials that did it. Definitely do this. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you learned something today, and if you're excited for the series, give a little thumbs up, let's give it a wee poke. Yeah, cheers. If you've got any questions, I'm gonna be hanging around in the comments for about an hour after this goes live to try and answer them all. Now, it's all up to you. Get out of there, learn something new, encourage others to learn, keep it fun, develop the skills, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. It's all about getting the perfect bike set up, and it's a, oh, it's a, it's a doozy. It's a long boy. Woo, how long? How long is it, Max? Half an hour. Half an hour. See you there. <laughs>